Hello and welcome to Crickpedia. We relate the word impossible to our spot so many times and the spot responds with a smile and proving us wrong every time, telling us that you just cannot relate impossible to cricket. One such impossible was in the year 1983. Who thought that a team that had just won one match in its previous two World Cups was going to be world champions in the next one? And that too by beating the winner of the previous two World Cups. Every team goes into the World Cup with a dream of lifting it. But the fact is that that Indian team went into the 1983 World Cup just for enjoying the holiday that they got in the beautiful country of England. They had decided that the only thing they were going to do is chill out over there. And cricket was something that, yeah, they had to play for the nation. They would give their best, but certainly they didn't have any hope of winning the 1983 World Cup. And nobody had hope. You had, you were always looking at, you know, teams like West Indies. They had already lifted the 1975 and 79 World Cup. You thought they are going to be a champion once again. You thought Australia had a chance. You thought England had a chance because it was being played at their house. But India, absolutely no chance. And that's when stuff starts changing. Three months prior to the World Cup, this Indian team travelled to West Indies. They beat West Indies in an ODI game over there. And all of a sudden, these thoughts started sinking in. My God, we have just defeated the West Indies. And that West Indies team didn't lose at home for a long time. And an Indian team doing that is almost a very, very horrifying upset to that home side. And the Indian team started believing that, you know what, we have defeated them in their own home ground. We can create some miracle in this coming World Cup. But as soon as the World Cup started approaching, you, the thoughts of, you know, again finishing last, not having any impact in this World Cup started coming back. And India's first match, again against the West Indies, the two-time defending champions. Everybody had written India off, saying that there is no chance India is going to do anything in this match. What India does, they bat first. They score 260 for 8. Again, the, kinds, the kind of players the West Indies team has, you have Vivian Richards, you have Clive Lloyd, you have Desmond Haynes, one of the finest batsmen of that era. All get out. West Indies all out for just a 228 and India win their first match and what's more important they beat the two-time defending champions and all of a sudden everybody starts talking can India do something that nobody expects them to do defeated West Indies at West Indies three months ago and then again defeated them in the first match of this World Cup it's quite surprising now after beating the West Indies in Manchester this Indian team travels to Leicester to play the Zimbabweans India is absolutely comfortable in these conditions. That's what everybody thinks. And well, they did prove that because they defeated the, West, uh, the Zimbabweans easily by five wickets, just chasing a target of less than 160, which was super easy. But the fact of life is that when you run so fast, there's something that pulls you back and shows you reality. And that was their next match against the Australians. India were thrashed by the Australians by 162 wickets. Australia batting first, scoring 320 runs. Remember that World Cup was of 60 overs. Initially, one day international cricket was of 60 overs. And the Australians thrashed India by 162 runs. They scored 320 batting first, and India all out just in within 158. The entire batting lineup collapsed. You don't have the Gavaskar scoring runs. You don't have the Vengsarkar scoring runs. You don't have the Srikant scoring runs. All of a sudden, the team is in turmoil. Again, your next match again is with the West Indies. And the West Indies show you why they are so powerful. They completely bamboozle all these Indian bat batsmen with the kind of fast bowling they have, beat India by around 70 runs. And India all of a sudden in four matches are with two wins and two losses. They started with two wins and two horrible losses bring them down in the points table. To qualify, now India needed to win at least one of their next two matches. The next two matches were with Zimbabwe and then with Australia. So everybody knew that India had their best chances to be, defeat Zimbabwe because Australia has just hammered them by 162 runs. The match against Zimbabwe wasn't held in some mega city with a lot of press cameras following the entire game. No television broadcast. It was, it was held somewhere outside in the outskirts at Turnbridge Wells. What happens? India go out to bat first. Very confident the openers are sure that they're going to get a 100 run partnership, they're going to score above 300, they're going to get this is the Zimbabweans all out and India qualify for the knockout stage for the very first time. India lined up 17 for 5. 
as, as in the words of one of the great wicket keepers, Sayyid Kirmani, he clearly says that he had decided, because he used to come down to bat at number 10, he had decided he's going to have his English tea, some nice breakfast, watch Gavaskar, Shrikant, all of them scoring centuries and easily come if it was necessary. He had never imagined that before he takes his first sip of his tea, he had to pad up and rush in because India were actually 17 for 5 against Zimbabwe on the verge of getting knocked out of this World Cup because nobody expected them to beat Australia. And then Kapil Dev, the Indian captain, walks out, scores 175, which was, which was almost unthinkable at that time. He showed the world that apart from being a world-class bowler, he is a superbly, you know, you can depend on him as a batsman. He's that great a batsman as well. And that's when Kapil Dev, the all-rounder, shined in front of everybody. It's a pity that that innings was not recorded or else the kind of 175 runs he scored, we all could have watched that and India recovered from 17 for 5 and reached 266 for 8 in their 60 overs. Obviously with Kapil Dev, there were a lot who supported him like Roger Binni, Madan Lal, Sayyid Kirmani for a long time. That innings from Kapil Dev was out of the world. It was, it was just unbelievable and the Zimbabweans shocked by what they just saw in the pre in the last few hours were all out which is 235 india securing a place in the knockout stage but that wasn't it they it, they had to make sure that they don't lose from australia by a big margin because that could affect their knockout selection the indian openers walk out at kem's fort and india managed to score 247 runs batting first not that great because this australian side a few few days ago just scored 320 against India and hammered them but what happens Australia get all out for 129 India defeat Australia by 118 runs and out of six matches win four and are probably the best team of the entire World Cup India learn that their semi-final opponents are going to be the host nation the Englishmen England go out to bat first Kapil Dev and Mohinder Amarnath are absolutely unplayable. One taking three wickets, one taking two wickets, just giving 27 runs in his 12 overs. Mohinder Amarnath was fantastic. And England are all out for 213. Now, what, what do we say about cricket? It's that whenever stuff becomes easy, it kind of turns pretty quick and becomes more than difficult. And that is what happened. 213 looked very easy. It wasn't a daunting target. But England made sure that India need to really work hard. Both the openers were not comfortable. Gavaskar scoring 25, Krishnamachari Shrikant scoring 19, not really that comfortable. And that's when stuff starts changing. Number 3, 4, 5, the dependable ones throughout the World Cup again performed. Mohinder Amarnath scored a well made 46, Yashpal Sharma scored 61, Sandeep Patel scored 51. And three of them made sure that comfortably India crossed the line and beat the Englishmen despite a very poor start from the Indian openers. This was India's strength. Whenever adversity struck India, they always responded with some incredible cricket. This journey has been incredible. From a point where nobody thought that India would manage to win even one match in this World Cup, this Indian team has managed to reach the final of the World Cup, the 1983 Prudential Cup. They are facing the West Indian, the two-time defending champions in this final at Lords, the home of cricket. What happens? India go to bat first. Gavaskar, two runs. You have Shrikant scoring 38, the highest scorer in the entire team. 38 is the highest score of the final. Can you believe it? It's it's horrible. <laughs> at times, in today's time, you'd say, he didn't get a 100? Oh my God, what a, he didn't even get a 50? How poor. But well, that was the story. India all out for 183. With the highest score being 38 from Krishnamachari Srikanth. West Indies need to score just at 3 runs per over and that West Indies team had the capability of scoring at 7 or 8 runs per over continuously because that side had Desmond Haynes, Gordon Greenwich, Vivian Richards, Clive Lloyd, a team that possibly no one could beat in that era had to just chase down 183. What happens? They come out to bat, Gordon Greenwich 1, Desmond Haynes 13, they have knocked off the two openers. And then comes their best batsman, possibly the best batsman of that era, Vivian Richards. He is in a rush to complete stuff. He wants to literally 
to smash every ball out of the park. And by the way, that was just the second match that was being telecasted from outside India. The first match being the semi-final. This was just the second match that was being telecasted in India at that time. And that was, that was a revolutionary change for Indian television as well. Seeing a match being played in England on television was something that was not seen before. And that's when Vivian Richards is smashing every ball and trying to change the course of the game. He's already hit seven boundaries. There's no way you can stop him. Madan Lal was bowling over after over, over after over, and every time he would bowl, Vivian Richards would smash him into the ropes. Kapil Dev went, went close to Madan Lal and told him, you know what, I'm stopping you for now. You can come back and obviously bowl later. And Madan Lal said, no, no way. He's hitting me like anything. Let him hit me. Because one shot he's going to miss time and it's going to go right up in the air. And once we catch hold of him, we are going to crown, be crowned champions. Madan Lal persisted. He came on, he bowled one more over to Vivian Richards. Vivian Richards again trying to hit that ball out of the park. He gets a very thick top edge and he hits it right up. But there's no fielder where he hits it. Kapil Dev is running in the opposite direction. He's standing at mid wicket. He's running absolutely in the opposite direction. And in cricket, it's always tough. If the ball is coming from here and to catch it like this, it's, it's always very tough because you aren't really, you aren't having your eyes on the ball. You really aren't sure where the ball is. You're kind of predicting it. And Kapil Dev takes a fantastic catch and that duo of Madan Lal and Kapil Dev taking Vivian Richards out from that final was unbelievable. That catch for long was the catch of, catch of the dec decade, I must say, because that catch had a lot of impact. Apart from being a great catch, he also got a great batsman out taking that catch. And Kapil Dev would always remember that catch and would always talk about that catch going forward. And the kind of relief the Indian fans felt after getting Vivian Richards out was unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And then the West Indian team just could not recover. Getting all out for just 140 runs in the final was something they had never expected. But well, that did happen and India beat the West Indians by 43 runs to clinch their maiden World Cup. A team that nobody had ever thought of becoming world champions, nobody had ever given them a chance, became world champions. And that was unbelievable at that time. You may think, what was so unbelievable about that? Look at India's past in World Cup history before that World Cup and then come back to this World Cup. You will certainly say unbelievable and that is that that's what that indian team under kapil dev achieved and that's why we call kapil dev one of the finest one day international captains for india he proved it then and well this team certainly was a team to beat from then on if you enjoy this cricketing fun do like share and comment and to know more about my upcoming videos do subscribe to frickpedia and hit the notification bell thank you